Here's your first video on the uh, work energy and power notes. This section is going to be on work and kinetic energy. So for your first slide here, there's three different scenarios in which you need to know that work is done when. So the first thing here, let's jot this down. It says a force causes a displacement of an object. So force is applied to a system, and in regards to that, there's going to be some displacement. You're not going to stay there, so the object will be moving due to this applied force. Number two, when work is done, it equals the magnitude of force times the magnitude of displacement. work is done when an object is moved with the action of a force parallel to the distance traveled. So that's like the key thing here with work guys is that obviously you're starting to see the trend that force and displacement have to be present. You apply a force and the object moves. Okay well how does this object move? So it says an object moves parallel due to the applied force. So your force and your distance have to be parallel to each other to say that work is done. So number three is pretty important here. So once again an object is moved with the action of a force parallel to the distance traveled. Okay, so look at this little cartoon here. This server is saying, this is great pay for doing no work. So what is the physics behind this? So the physics behind this is obviously he's applying a force. He's pushing up on the tray, but he's moving forward, correct? So that's like 2D motion. So that would be like a 90 degree angle that you're applying there between your distance and your force, agreed? Well, then can you say that the upward force that you're, while well, the server is applying on the tray is parallel to the distance traveled? No. So therefore, in the physics sense, how much work is being done? Zero. Joules is what we'd be talking about. But from this, look at equation number two real quick. It says work equals force times displacement. Okay, but you need to assume as well that your force and your distance are moving parallel to each other. So technically, we need to also throw a theta in there. So let's kind of look a little bit more further at this. So the two equations that we want to look at here is that, very, very general, and this is not your original equations yet. I'm just like, like, you know, kindergarten versus fourth grade versus physics, okay? So the kindergarten version is work equals force times distance, right? That's like what number two said. But then number three says that you need to put in some theta that would say that F and D are working parallel to each other. So you want to use cosine theta here. This cosine theta, whatever your degrees are, are going to show that F and D are parallel to each other. So what we want to look at is obviously W stands for work, F stands for force, and D stands for distance traveled. Your distance is in meters, your force is in newtons, which is really a kilogram times a meter uh, per second squared. Um, so, whoops, so what that's really going to give you is called a joule. Okay, you're going to get joules there. So what we want to look at on the next couple of slides here is work being done. So on this slide, and you can click on this physicsclassroom.com on your own time, but really all I'm trying to get you to see here is that this train is being pulled up by a force, so pretend there's a pulley system on here, and it's moving in that same direction. So these two lines you can clearly see are parallel to each other. So since these two lines are parallel to each other, work is being done. Why is work being done? And this is simply because F and D are, what is it guys? F and D are parallel to each other. Okay? So in other words,
words, what we really want to look at here is that cosine of theta needs to be zero degrees. And if cosine zero, like put it in your calculator, cosine zero comes out to be one. Therefore, work is done. But what about cosine of 90? Cosine of 90 would imply that they are working perpendicular to each other. If you put cosine 90 in your calculator, you get zero. Therefore, work is not done, right? It's going to equal zero joules in that scenario. And then our last one that we have here is, well, what if you apply a force and the distance goes opposite that direction? Okay, like for instance, you're talking about kinetic friction, not the applied force. Well, that's just simply going to be negative one. So work is still being done. It's just now you're putting a direction onto the work, right? So work would be like a vector quantity that you'd want to look at. So what we're going to do with our work is we're going to break ourselves into vector components. If you are drawn like a, a triangle, so instance, this dot here is going for a walk. So you would draw this and then that and then up. There's your theta. So figure out that this would be your cosine theta and this one would be your sine theta because this is adjacent and this guy is opposite theta. That side of the triangle is opposite theta. So you're moving from the horizontal. So here's your horizontal and then you're going up. Agreed? You're going from the horizontal to get this resultant line. This resultant line was already given to you, so you're just applying it to right here. Next, what we have is, this is the equation, okay? This is the equation, so this one would be considered your original when you're talking about work. W net equals F net D cosine theta. That's the original equation. So what we're going to look at, though, is work as a scalar quantity, which kind of sort of changes here, because we're going to be talking about positive and negative here in a second. And all we're talking about here is if you're going to use 0 degrees or 180 degrees. But where does acceleration come to play with this? Because right now we're talking about, like back here, we're looking at force. So obviously, we've got to go back and talk about acceleration. Um, if an object is moving at a constant velocity, okay, an object moving at a constant velocity, what can you say about its acceleration? Well, its acceleration should equal zero meters per second squared, agreed? Because it's moving at a constant velocity, i.e. cruise control is set. So what does this mean about the force that's acting on the object? Well, it means that there are balanced forces, that the forces are balanced, right? Why are the forces balanced? Because your F net equals zero newtons, because A equal, technically A net, equals zero meters per second squared. Make sense? Okay. So the equation that we're looking at here is F net equals M A net, whereas your A net equals zero, so your F net equals zero newtons. All right. So with this whole idea here, don't worry about positive and negative network, not a big deal. But what I want you to see here is that if your F and D are in opposite directions, then it's classified as negative work. But if your F and D are in the same direction, then you have positive work. following scenarios, unfortunately I can't click on them while doing this, but if you look at these scenarios, all it's going to do is just prove that work is or is not being done. So like one's going to say a teacher is pushing on a wall and they're exhausted from pushing on this wall. Well, is there work being done? No. Why isn't there work being done? Because the wall's not going anywhere, right? So therefore the work would be zero joules. So it's just little helpful hints like that, guys. So please do take a second, click on this slide, or sorry, on your little globe here. Hopefully this will work. Oh, yay. And it takes you to your physicsclassroom.com section on this. So here's these different statements here. Uh, a book falls off of the table and free falls to the ground. Is work being done? The force that, that was acting on it in the direction that the book is traveling, force of gravity in the direction the book is traveling. So what we see here is that, yes, it's an example of work. Force of gravity is acting in the same direction downward, so there is work that's being done. You already did the waiter one. Rocket accelerating through space. Well, there is an acceleration, so you do have an F net, which means you do have a W. 
So you should see work being done there. So there's just some examples here that I'd like you guys to look at. Okay, back to your notes then. What we see here is our sample problem in which we read through and we see that our distance is 3.0 meters and our force is 50.0 newtons. Our theta is 30.0 degrees and we are trying to solve for W net in joules. So our original equation is W net equals F net D cosine theta. We do not need to rearrange. Variables look good. So we have 50.0 times 3.0 times the cosine of 30.0. Please put this into your calculators and let's jot down our calculated answer. 50 times 3 times the cosine of 30.0. Calculator answer, guys. So on my calculator, I see 129.9. So then looking at sig figs over here, our right number of sig figs that we want to take with us is two sig figs. So therefore, our final answer is 130 joules. Our other acceptable answer would be 1.3 times 10 to the second joules, if you were asked to put it in the scientific notation. Okay, so. These clips right here are going to assess, are you getting it? Like, how are things going? It's just kind of a checkpoint on, literally right here in the middle of the slide, checking your understanding. So for these different diagrams, apply the work equation to determine the amount of work done by the applied force in each of these three situations described below. So looking at A over here on the middle, you are a 100 newton force is applied and moves a 15 kilogram object a horizontal distance of five meters at a constant speed. Okay, so let's look at our answers here. So with this one, the distance and the force are traveling in the same direction, therefore your cosine is zero degrees. So simply 100 times five is going to give you your 500 joules. Look at B, see if you can get 433 out of it. And then look at C and see if you get 735 out of it as well. So those are just once again interjected in there for you to do some checkpoints of, am I getting this? Where do I need to ask questions? What's not making sense? So moving on to kinetic energy, it's defined as energy of motion. And with this energy of motion, it's going to be dependent upon the mass of the object as well as the velocity of the object. Mass of the object as well as the velocity of the object. So therefore, we can assume that in the equation, you're going to have to have mass and velocity, whereas the equation is Ke equals 1 half mv squared. Ke stands for kinetic energy. And the ability to do work is to have energy, so it's measured in joules as well. Your m is your mass, which is measured in kilograms, and your v is your velocity, which is measured in meters per second. So a kilogram times a meters per second is what a joule is equivalent to. Your kinetic energy is considered to be a scalar quantity as well, showing magnitude only. Okay, so think about this. Bully ball and a volleyball moving at the same velocity. So a Ke equals 1 half mv squared. Velocity is your constant. So which would have more kinetic energy? Well, the relationship between those two variables is a direct relationship. So therefore, as mass increases, your kinetic energy is also going to increase. So therefore, the heavier object, which we can safely assume is the bowling ball, will have more kinetic energy. Your sample problem here. You go into this problem knowing that the mass of the first object is 7.00 kilograms. The uh, velocity is going to be uh, 3.00 meters per second. A second one mass is 200, or sorry, 2.45 grams, which equals 2.45 times 10 to the third, negative third, negative third kilograms, and you also know that the Ke of the first object is equal and opposite to the Ke of the second object. You're asked to solve for the velocity of the second object in meters per second. So on this equation here, we've just kind of skipped ahead and I've shown you the work. You would solve for Ke1, which is Ke2, which would give you this final answer. Looking at your sig figs, you only want two sig figs for your final answer. So 160 um, joule, or sorry, meters per second would be your V2. That is all.
watch this slide, guys. <laughs>